is Don Pettit. Um, I'm executive director of Peace Energy Renewable Energy Cooperative. In 1974, I moved up to Dawson Creek trying to get away from big city stuff. I spent a lot of time in big cities and was going for a rural and maybe I could own property up here and kind of do my own thing. And as soon as I got to Dawson Creek, I really liked it for all those reasons. Way back in 74, this was a different world up here and it was very primitive, uh, but really cool, you know, and uh, wonderful people, really, and uh, not many rules. <laughs> you can kind of do your own thing, you know, property, super cheap beautiful properties available. Um, so it was kind of a dream come true moving up here. Back in uh, Southern Ontario, uh, high school uh, camera club. And we had a little dark room in the basement and a great physics teacher who uh, took us under, took a little group of us, grade 11, grade 12 sort of students under his wing and taught us a uh, basic dark room. We were shooting um, film with a great big 4x5 Graflex camera for the, yeah, that's how I learned, was on a big 4x5 Graflex. Uh, that was before there was a 35 millimeter film camera, really, right? I went on to university to study science. My family has a strong scientific and engineering background, so I was kind of expected to do that. But well into year three, I decided, hmm, I think I like photography better <laughs> than, than, than chemistry. <laughs> so I made up a little uh, black and white um, portfolio and beat the streets in Toronto and found, got, uh, got a job in photography with a guy who desperately needed help. And I worked with him for a couple of years and that was big film, big large format, 5x7, 8x10 cameras in a huge studio with big lights and learned a lot very quickly. Um, he was a, a good teacher in his way. After a couple of years of that, I just went freelance in Toronto. I figured I knew enough and I got into a wide variety of graphic things. We did photo screen printing, was high tech in those days where you're printing with ink and paper on paper with squeegees and things. But for the first time in history, you could do it photographically. So you could take a photograph and put it on a t-shirt or something. That was revolutionary in the era and I was very much involved in that and got in with a group of people. We had our own business. So I started right into being an entrepreneurial photographer of one form or another very early on in my early mid-twenties, I guess you'd say. So that's how I really got into it. That and that group of people in Toronto that we started into photo screen printing with, I set up the first dark room, we got it all working for them. We had to study. I mean, this is all new. This is high tech in the era, right? Then as a group, we moved down to Southern California and set up a cloth printing business. We were doing um, t-shirts, we were doing, uh, you know, um, all kinds of clothing. And then we got into bulk uh, printing of um, cloth too and uh, hired a bunch of people and had all the jigs and invented a bunch of stuff anyway did that for three or four years uh, down in southern california but you know i started to miss canada i started to miss um the seasons so i started to look uh, in the north uh, up north for a uh, place to go. We got to Dawson Creek and we just got out of the car and it was spring, there was still snow on the ground, but instantly loved it. Just the whole vibe of this place was just beautiful and um, hard to describe, hard to pin down why that happened, but um, a few weeks later we were moving up here and buying our first little house in Dawson Creek. As soon as I got here I realized the, this little town needed a photographer. There was one here but everybody was tired of him and he was always, he was really expensive and super fancy and so so I opened a photo studio here almost immediately and um, that was called Image 3 Studios. After five years of portraiture and weddings here in my little studio, I 
branched out into uh, video production at that point. I had a really good friend who was specializing in video. We formed a partnership uh, and um, started in the commercial video production, along with more commercial still photography as well at the time. Desktop computers were just coming in strong, and then you could start doing publishing in your office. Before that, it had to be done non-digitally. So I got really interested in publishing, started with newsletters and things. It got set up with a printer and desktop uh, computer system, which is all kind of you know, state of the art at the time. I remember when I was working in Toronto, I went into um, sort of a graphics house. I was applying for a part-time job there for a while to become a photographer. And what was in this beautiful little facility was a whole bunch of artists, a couple of photographers, somebody were kind of running the building, and they're all kind of collaborating. And I just thought, wow, what a cool place, right? So I thought, oh, maybe that's what I'll do in Dawson Creek. And so I kind of did. Hired a graphic artist and another photographer <clears throat> and a sort of an office person. And we went right into it. Um, and that is commercial industrial photography, graphic design. Um, then it went into marketing. Um, and we, my wife I was um, a very talented artist as well, uh, illustrator artist. So she started uh, doing work with us. Uh, and she's also a brilliant writer and editor, so we needed that. Um, and that's when I got into publishing and decided to do my own photo book. So that was the first book of photographs, and then the second one was the history one, and the third one was the wind power one. Book publishing all depends on promoting the book. You can't it can't sit on a shelf. You've got to get out there and you've got to hustle it. And I knew that. I figured that out pretty early on before ordering any books. So I had produced a, a companion video for the book and got a beautiful blues band from Fort St. John. Inroads Blues Band. They're still around. And then a sound man, because you know what our, our slideshow that went with the video? It was two slide projectors. <laughs> with a controller, so they would dissolve. That's what we toured with. We toured with a blues band, uh, a video uh, with a, uh, no, 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 a slideshow. Sorry, this is what we started with, a slideshow, right? And with original music that a friend of mine, a composer friend produced. And so it was like a, it was like a, I don't know, Sort of a, yeah, it was a show. We put on a show. We're now in the fifth press run of that book. It's still selling. Piece, a series of peace books really focus on the region, the bioregion, and thinking of the importance of uh, identifying with where you live, the importance of place, and how it affects who you are, and, and how you behave, and whatever, your whole life, right? Just depending on where you're living uh, to a large extent. Sort of making pride of place was sort of my one of my big motivations for the book publishing, etc., and also the marketing and the photography, right? Loved it here because of beautiful, beautiful landscapes and the quick availability to nature. So I've been a nature photographer ever since I arrived. That's when I went into the books, etc., a lot of that. But you know, I had been fighting fighting, fighting, fighting against things. I've been fighting. The environmental destruction I was seeing around here was shocking. The longer I stayed here, the more I could see the industry moving in and things happening. And it was very disturbing. But you know, at some point I got tired of fighting against everything. That was uh, about 20 years ago. All my energy was going into this negativity. And about 20 years ago, I just, I just burned out on it. And I just said, okay, no, 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 I can't do this anymore. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a 180, and I'm gonna go, all my energy now from now on is gonna be placed into positive solutions to the problems I perceive. And build the world, as they say, build the world you want to see. And that's when I started, help start Peace Energy Renewable Energy Cooperative. Yada and I have been talking about this for a year or so, and then we got a group of people together and we made it happen. 
And what was happening up here at the time in this region was there was what we were calling a wind rush. You've heard of a gold rush? 20 years ago, there was a wind rush here. People were coming in from all over the world, snapping up all the best wind sites. Somehow the peace region got on the wind map. And as it turns out, we have some of the best wind in the world right here, wind energy. I became a photographer videographer to document the actual two-year construction process and I was blown away by what I saw. It was unbelievably sophisticated technology. That's that whole story. Now Peace Energy Cooperative is still going strong and uh, now we're heavily into solar. We put up some of the largest solar arrays in the province right here in Hudson's Hope. And now, I mean, now there's hundreds of renewable energy cooperatives across Canada, but we were the second one in Canada. putting it on their houses and people. That's another big part of the story. People are ready for this. They, they really want solar. And uh, we're, we are just getting calls and calls and walk-ins every day. <laughs> if we could have more manpower, we could probably do two or three times as much solar as we can handle right now. It's really taking off uh, and right here in the peace region, right? So um, so that's really encouraging. And it's surprising how uh, sort of a head of governments, individual people tend to be when it comes to energy energy, uh, it's quite remarkable. I'm still in the photographic racket and, uh, and really enjoying what I do for them, right? It's, it's really great, cool, cool stuff and I love solar and I, I wish there was more wind happening up here because it's, we have, as I say, some of the best wind in the world and it's just blowing by us and that's fine. I mean, whatever, the wind will still be there with the location here too. I've got to say, you know, that the Peace Region, I, I know Dawson Creek really well, but it's probably Fort St. John and other communities here too are very welcoming to people who come in and they want to do something original or they want to involve other people and or they want to start a special kind of business or, or form a group or whatever might be your interest or your inclination can be business oriented or, or not it's a really good environment for that up here there's a, a vibrant artistic community as well right which adds a kind of a surprising base of uh, creativity to the whole scene up here, which is surprising, right, in a way. And then there's close proximity to the natural world. And, you know, it's just fantastic. As I say, if you pursue your interests, pursue them passionately, it's impossible to fail. It's just impossible. Anybody who does that succeeds. So, you know, don't do what your parents think you should do or thought you should do or whatever, or what the, the world is telling you maybe you should do for your mortgage. No, 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 no. Pursue your dreams, pursue your dreams and pursue them passionately and you will be extremely successful in whatever way you want to define success. Thank you.